Fly camera one. Quick slant out. And another incomplete pass intended to for Jake Kenner. Yeah. If you're the Eagles, you have to get up on this defensive play and force the quarterback to make an, an, an error. Excellent, you got the ball in, nicely done. Three to three, go to three. By Bell. Bell breaks oh. two tackles. It's all you three, Bell's nicely out. done. Oh, oh, oh you should have stayed there. Keep falling them back three. Welcome to Rush Stadium in Kettering, Ohio for tonight's MVCC Game of the Week, week number two presented by Kettering Health. The 1-0 Fairmont Firebirds are set to host the 0-1 Trotwood Madison Rams. Andy, why don't you go ahead and introduce us to Trotwood's head coach. Well, Jared, Trotwood's head co uh, Trotwood is coached by Jeff Graham. He's been with the Rams for eight years. So Trotwood knows him well. He's a very good coach. They've had a lot of success under him. So the keys to the game for the Rams, they're going to have to keep third downs manageable. Last week they were 3 of 15 on third down against Winton Woods. And you're just not going to be successful if you're not able to do better on the early downs. They had negative 61 rushing yards. Winton Woods is a very good defensive team. So it's going to be, it's probably going to be a lot different this week for them. But they're going to have to do better on the early downs. Um, they're going to have to uh, be better. They're going to have to have better blocking by their offensive line. They gave up eight sacks last week. And like I said, Winton Woods is a, is a crazy good defensive team. So uh, they're going to have to do much better this week. To, so on the defensive end, they're going to have to limit big plays. Uh, they allowed a 47-yard passing touchdown last week that really kind of took them out of the game. Can't really allow those. And then they're going to have to watch for the pass. We all know these Fairmont Firebirds, they love to run the ball. But last week we saw them throw the ball three times, and if it wasn't for those three big pass plays, they would not have won their game last week against Alter. So they're going to have to watch out for that because Fairmont is, has been very effective so far with that. Jared, what is Fairmont going to have to do to be effective tonight? Well, first, the, co the Firebirds are coached by Dave Miller. This is his sixth season at the helm for the Firebirds and coming off a big win last week, his third win against Alter in his stint here. But first, offensively, the offensive line. This game is going to be won on the Battle of the Trenches with the Firebirds. Last week, Drew Baker himself had 132 rushing yards on 30 carries, and that can lead into the next one. Feed Baker the ball. Keep giving Baker the ball. This offensive line gets to the second and third level on blockings. So it's going to be easy, or not going to say easy, but it's going to be difficult for this Trotwood Madison defense to adapt to that, I think. Fairmont has a big offensive line. Defensively, they're going to have to force turnovers. Wenton Woods didn't do it that much. I think only three turnovers last week, but last week the Firebirds forced. I mean, turnover on downs is the same as a turnover in my book. They stopped the Alter Knights three times last week in short field position for their offense. And finally... Limit the big plays on the outside. Coach Miller said in his pregame interview, Alt, or Trotwood has the ability to make big plays on the outside, and they're going to have to cover the length of the field if they want to hang into this football team or hang into this football game and try to go 2-0 on the season, something they haven't done in, a, in a, quite a few years. And then them celebrating the, this 100th year of their football season, they are going to do everything they can to try to make it a perfect 100 years. But we're going to toss it down to the band for the national anthem, and we're going to be back for the kickoff in your MVCC. Five for the Fairmont Firebird cheerleaders, and you're watching the MVCC Game of the Week.
I believe the Fairmont Firebirds won the toss and elected to defer to the second half. Andy, real quick, since Fairmont's going to get the ball first, who do we have to watch out for on the Firebirds' offensive side? Well, you know, Jared, I think that one is an easy guess. We're talking about the running back, Drew Baker. He was absolutely dominant week one against Alter, averaging well over four yards of carry. He was excellent in that game, and he's going to be a workhorse for this team this season. As he was last season, he had over 800 yards. So I would expect for him to have a huge impact in today's game. The Rams have the ball on the tee, and we are underway in our MVCC game of the week for week number two. Shane Pryor kicks it off. Firebirds get it out to about the 30-yard line. It'll be about out to the 28, 29. That was re er, returned by Drew Baker, and he's going to get the just stay on the field as he's going to be the main running back tonight for the Firebirds. Yeah, Jared, and on the stop right there in that play, it was Kamari Cleveland, someone who we expected to see last week in West Carrollton's game, but he transferred over the summer to Trotwood, and he had a good game last week, had a reception on offense for 10 yards and had an interception, one of the few bright spots last week for the Rams. So we expect to see big things out of him tonight. As we look to have an early timeout or... No, the refs are stopping this. I think they saw lightning in the back. So that's going to put 30 minutes on the clock. We'll provide updates throughout the 30 minutes if we're going to continue this game tonight or not. So follow us on Twitter at MVCC Social or myself at Jberg underscore 16 for updates throughout this weather delay. And hopefully we'll be back in 30 minutes. All right, we are back here at Roush Stadium. 11.55 left on the clock. First and 10 at the 29 for the Firebirds. Thank you all for who waited as Hillen will hand it off to Baker right up the middle for about a gain of one on the play. Now we are underway after the opening kickoff and then a, about an hour delay. It's second and nine here at the 30 for the Firebirds. Hillen, you see, calling, directing plays at the line of scrimmage. Baker in the backfield to his right. Hillen's going to fake the handoff to, no, no, Baker got the handoff. My apologies. About a gain of four on the play, so it'll bring up third and about four as we are a minute in to this game and weather is beyond us and hopefully we'll get a full game in here. That right there was Baker's second carry of the game. That one was pretty good carry they were able to find some room up the left side and it continues on with his season average about four and a half yards a play two carries tonight for six yards so just a little bit under it so far on this first drive Hillen is going to give it to Baker up the middle Baker bursts through across the 45 out to the 46 for a Firebirds first down and that's another big big nice run there for Baker it's a quick start to him already. Three carries and three carries and about 17 yards on the ground. And you see Fairmont quickly back to the line of scrimmage, but they will take that full play clock down to about one. Porter goes in motion. Almost fell down there, and that would have been a false start called against the Firebirds. There's going to be a lot of pressure on the Rams secondary to slow down this offense. Baker gets the carry again right up the middle. About a gain of two maybe on the play. They'll call it a long one. 9.40 left here in the second, first quarter. Tackled by number 20, Arian Edwards for the Rams. And we apologize in advance if we mess up anybody's name. It is not, not by plan. 
So we approach nine minutes left here in the first quarter. Helen barking out orders to his linemen. Hillen's going to fake it, gets the pitch outside, and Laundry comes in, and it's going to be an offsides against the fire or the Rams, it looks like. And you know, Jared, that was something that was really an issue for the Rams last week. They had 12 penalties called against them for 100 yards, and their offense was never able to get going, and that was a big reason why. Uh, 100 yards worth of penalties and negative 61 rushing yards makes for a long day against a very good Witten Woods team as they. Wynton Woods won that one 18 to nothing last week yeah, we against were, the Rams. We were talking to Coach Miller before the game, and he he told us, he's like, you know, this Wynton Woods front seven, they're they're a special bunch. They they're sent, they send guys to the oh, Big no, he Ten. He rattled off like five of the top six conferences in the country that they get hold offers to. Baker gets another carry right up the middle for about a gain of about a yard and a half. So we'll see. It'll be third and about three. Now you see some substitutions coming in. You saw number two, Brian Lease, come in for the Firebirds, as well as, I believe, number 12, Connor Miller. Hillen under center. Now they're going to look back. You see there number 24, Will Porter, comes in motion a lot. He will get that pitch out from Hillen from time to time in this Firebirds offense. Hillen keeps it. Pitches it to Porter. Porter has the first down, stays on his feet, and gets tackled, pulled down from behind at the 30-yard line. Looks like that was number nine, Isaiah Evans, with the maybe touchdown saving stop. If you look at the NBCC replay, you can see Hillen hangs on watch to it, this makes the late pitch. Beautiful pitch there by Hillen, and watch, shreds off one tackle. Porter muscles his way down to the 30-yard line. That Porter is a big, strong back, listed it. 5'9", 205, so he's not very tall, but he's very compact. It's hard to bring down. You saw there, ran through two defenders on that play, and I think if, if Evans wasn't there or couldn't have got a better handle, I think he could have been in the end zone. Now Hillen gets the center and hands off to Baker again for about a gain. And actually, besides that big... 15-yard run, that was probably Baker's best run of the game, gain of four, five on the play. Yeah, and you know, that's something that this Fairmont offense loves to do. They, we know they run the ball a lot, and with teams that, that like to run the ball 30, 40 times a game, it's a lot of little plays, little plays, and then they, they get a big one here and there. Firebirds thrive on those type of situations. I think we call that the lullaby effect. <laughs> Hillen under center, gonna hand it off to Baker again. And that time he stopped at the line of scrimmage, maybe gets one. So this will be third and about five. Third and five at the 25 as we approach six and a half minutes here. If, and now Fairmont, I mean, third and five here. We Years before, we've seen the Firebirds go for it on fourth and short, but after last week's performance by junior kicker Will Holt, he has the leg that he can make it from here. Baker gets the carry up the middle, and this one's going to be close. And that's good blocking up front. You saw there he ran right over, right between the block of the Kettering Health replay goes up the right side of the Just line. Look at that, the edge block right there. I believe that was number 78, Brandon Denlinger. Huge hole there on Creates the Creates a huge hole there as Baker, it's, oh, it's gonna be fourth and inches here. 5.30 left in the first quarter. And Fairmont brings in the triple I formation, something we've seen Patton in this it yard, little yardage situation. Baker gets the carry. And, and I think that was a false start, Jared. Looks like the Firebirds got started a little early. That's going to take him back five. False start against Fairmont. That's going to push him back to the 26. And now here you see number 16, the junior kicker, Will Holt. 
looking at some of his stats, he is a five-star kicker as a junior in the country. D has done a lot of work I saw in the offseason with a lot of top colleges around the area. He's an impressive young man, Jared. This is going to be a 42-yard 42 42-yard 42 field goal here for Holt. Let's see if the junior can put the Firebirds on the board on their first possession of the game. The snap's good, holds good, kick is up, and I think that was blocked. And that was almost caught by number nine, Evans. He would have had a chance to return that, but instead it's going to go out of the back of the end zone. That's going to be Rams ball. That's going to be Rams ball. I think that's going to take him back to the 20. You see here, yeah, it was blocked at the line. Didn't see who, what lineman got a paw up on it, but. Good job by the special teams unit of the Rams with the first big play of the game for him. I, I kind of would have wanted to see what that what that kick could have actually done. I mean, you don't see 42-yard field goals in high school football. Not very often, Jared. So Rams are going to take over on the blocked field goal, first and 10 at their own 20. And you're going to see number 10, Tim Carpenter, come out and be in under center. Carpenter going to throw a quick out pass to the far sideline. Tackled after about a gain of seven or eight on the play. And that was Kamari Cleveland there, Jared, number four, the transfer from West Carrollton. He's an explosive player. We, talk, we talked about him a lot last year when we were covering West Carrollton. You see he's able to get the screenplay out into the flat, pick up a good couple yards after he's able to break a couple of tackles. It was a gain of nine on the play. He only had one catch for 10 yards last game, almost already got that here in the first quarter. 4.15 left in the first quarter. You're gonna see two to the top, and now here's gonna go a quick pass to number seven, Robert Garrett, and he still stays up and pushed out of bounds finally, and that was close to being close to the sideline, but pushed out of bounds by number 29, Evan Thompson for the Firebirds. And that's a first down on the play. A nice, another screen pass this time, going to the left side of the field instead of the right. Find some open room there in the flat and pick up the first down. Carpenter might have to work, work on bringing, that looked like it was a little bit out in front of Garrett. You don't want to send your receiver going out. I mean, with how quick this Fairmont linebacking core was last week, you don't want to see him put his receiver in a spot where he could get injured. Carpenter back to pass, ch checks down to the Running back out of the backfield, that was number 20, I believe. No, maybe not. 28, Demario Owens. It's gain of five on the play for the Rams. They are out to the 43 yard line. You're gonna see three receivers to the top now for the Rams. And here comes the handoff, spin move, and gets tackled right at the 45. That was carried by. So it's gonna be third and three here, just under three minutes left to go in the first quarter. Carpenter back. Linebackers look like they're gonna show blitz, but get back out of it. And a rush up the front, Carpenter's gonna run and will have enough for a first down across midfield and in the Firebirds territory for a run of about eight on the play. That was a beautiful run there by Carpenter. When you look on the replay, he, see, he senses the uh, linebacker rushing, he's able to get out of the pocket very quickly. Tackled on the play there by number three, Asa Hester for the Firebirds. Pressure came by Evan Thompson, number uh, 29. Called his name already quite a few times on this opening drive. He's Everywhere for the Firebirds so far at this linebacking position. And you see here, he looks like he's gonna blitz from the bottom. This time there's pressure. And there's a flag comes in, so we'll see what the play negates. But it, 
on the field. It's a first down run, a gain of 12 for the Rams by Carpenter. There's another nice play by Carpenter, able to escape, finds or feels the pressure in the pocket as he sees things collapses on him very quickly. The offensive line unable to hold up again this week so far. And that's a holding penalty called against the Rams. Holding against Troutwood will push it back to the 37, I believe. So it'll be first and 20. Actually, it's a spot foul, so it's first and 13 and that is at the, the 40. Their first penalty of this game, Jared. It's going to be interesting to see if that's another issue for oh, them. Oh, no, sorry. They had an offsides on a Fairmont play earlier. And Fairmont comes, and Carpenter is sacked in the backfield More for a loss pressure. of five. Looks like that one was number 34, Tyler Atkins. You see here in the Kettering Health replay, Fairmont, Nice swim move to get around the line, and that is that that's gonna be a solo sack there. But you were right, number 34. And that's beautiful, great effort by by the line or by the defensive lineman. He was on the ground and he was still able to make the sack. Right, held on to that or just great hit that effort. Foot, that's, yes. that's what every coach wants to see, Jared. So that takes it from first and thirteen to second and nineteen, a loss of sixteen. As this drive has quickly derailed itself for the Rams. Well, Coach Miller said, and there's going to be a timeout on the far side of the field, timeout called by Trotwood. But Miller said, we're going to have to keep the pressure up on the front seven. And so far, Fairmont doing it on the after that big first down play. Fairmont has adjusted and has had two big sacks in the backfield. A minute five left here in the first quarter. It'll be Second and 29 at the Trotwood 34. And the Rams have taken a timeout. I want to give a huge shout out to our sponsor, Kettering Health. Thank you for coming on board this year and sponsoring us. We want to remind you to stay up on all action that we will have throughout the season. Follow us on for information follow us on all social medias at mvcc social you can find us on instagram and twitter and also miami valley communications council on facebook as well as mvcc game of the week on facebook or you can follow yours truly at jberg underscore 16 for live updates on twitter throughout the game But after, after that about hour lightning delay, we have had a good first quarter of football here so far. Carpenter back to pass, looking to throw it deep in the middle. It is hauled in. And no, they're going to call it incomplete. The ref is going to say that one skipped off the ground before he was able to pull it in. So third and 30, 59.7 seconds left in this first quarter. Kamari Cleveland was the intended target on the play. It looked like Cleveland ran right to the edge of the zone coverage that the Firebirds were running. And I think Fairmont adjusted and saw where he was going and quickly you, you saw three Firebirds almost surround him. Now Cleveland in motion once again. Carpenter looks like a broken play and Carpenter's brought down in the backfield for another big loss for the Firebirds. That one I think is number 45. Will Paris watch this? And Carpenter was looking in the backfield for somebody. To, I think it was just going to be a running play to keep the clock going. But Will Paris blows through and gets another two yard loss on the sack. And Fairmont is going to get this ball back to, with about 15 seconds left here in the first quarter. Looks like you're going to have Baker back to return this punt. Uh, End over end punt. Baker, fair catch at the 40 or at the 37. And Fairmont will have 16.3 seconds left here in the first quarter before we will go to the break between quarters. First and 10 at the 37. And I'm going to assume we're going to get a, 
the second round of Baker up the middle. <laughs> it worked. And then you had Porter had that big outside run to the outside. You know, when I watch Fairmont and I watch Baker with the ball, he reminds me a lot of Peyton Hillis from the early 2010s with the Browns. He's a big physical runner. First down and 10 now from Baker is going to get the carry. And that is going to do it for the end of the first quarter. Gain of four on that play. And that is how the first quarter will come to an end. Fairmont and Trotwood tied at zero here in our MVCC game of the week for week number two, presented by Kettering Health. Welcome back here as we get ready to start the second quarter. And here's a surprising stat for you. Trotwood won the time of possession battle against the Firebirds. Almost seven minutes to, seven, or to five minutes for the Rams. Well, Jared, I think we both know if Firebirds will oh, win this gonna win, game. They're going to win this. They're going to win the time of possession the rest of the game. It's just a fun fact to point out when Fairmont doesn't win it for a quarter. But second and eight here from the 39, Fairmont moving right to left on your screen. So they'll be moving towards the end zone or to the scoreboard. Baker had 31 yards on the ground that last. And that's going to be another false start on the Firebirds. Self-destructing here early in the game. what the refs say. You see one signal with offsides, one signal with false start. It's going to be a false start against the Firebirds. Their second penalty of the game. So now it'll be second and 13. Second and 13 from the 34. Fairmont, Hillen goes back under center. Play clock's down to three. The Rams ran Hillen keeps pressure. the fake. He has room to the outside. He's at the 50 and tackled down at about the 47 or 44. I believe that was number two with the tackle for the Rams. Dylan Heflin on the stop. But a huge first down run there by Hillen, as you see in the MVCC Kettering Health replay. Hillen, the blocking there. Look, number 84 again. Noah Wilkins with a comeback block there to secure the edge. And you know, Jared, the Rams had like eight guys up on the line of scrimmage that play. So if they didn't get the stop as soon as that play started, they had no one on the back end to play defense. And so Hillen had a ton of room after he took off down the left side. And, and that's this. Firebirds offense method. They're going to draw you in, draw you in. See it again. There's at least seven guys on the line that time. And Baker gets through about for a gain of three on the play. But that, I mean, that, Dave Miller, I mean, he had a very successful stint at Covington. He had, I think, seven perfect se regular seasons. So, I mean, the man knows what he's doing. I mean, he's bringing a small can't remember what conference Covington was in, but I mean, he's brought it to Fairmont and has made it work. Two trips to the playoffs under him in six year, in his entering his sixth year, but more importantly, three wins against Alter, and he ended the losing streak against the Centerville Elks two years ago. Yeah, Jared, those two things, that, that's might, you might as well win a Super Bowl for, for these guys. As 
Baker gets a carry up the middle again. Two biggest rivals, one in conference, one just cross one town. not even a mile and a half up the road. Right. And to win them both, I, I want to say it was the same season. It'd be like Michigan beating Ohio State. That doesn't happen. At my point, exactly. <laughs> Now we got 10, 15. Third and five here from the 38. And depending on what the Firebirds pick up here, this is a possible go for it situation on fourth down for the Firebirds. We saw last week against the Knights, they were five for five on fourth down. Something that I would have never thought I would have seen, Jared. Baker along gets the with carry the carry up the middle, hurdles over a defender and gets the first down down to the 31. That'll move the chains. You don't see Baker hurdle a lot, but watch here, right at the end, he's just gonna, well, no, he wasn't hurdled, he was just taken out of the knees. I believe that was number five, maybe, Tyreek Gooch. Down to the 31, it's enough for a Firebirds first down. You know, Jared, so far I've been impressed by the Firebirds offense. They're getting almost anything they want right now. The, they're executing their, ru their running game perfectly. It, it, it works beautifully when you have your keys to the game go with what's actually happening on the field. Baker gets the carry. Or no, actually, I think Hillen kept it and ran right behind him. A good fake there, but you saw Baker. He busted through there. You know, that's a great thing about Baker. If you don't handle the ball, he's a great lead blocker. Oh, yeah. I mean, like, like you said, I mean, how many times did we see Peyton Hillis lead the block? He's only 5'11". 184, but Baker. he's a powerful, powerful runner. Oh, yeah. It might be a little too young for you, but he kind of reminds me of Mike Allstock. Uh, okay. Tampa Bay Buccaneers yep, older back go. in their Super Bowl run. He, he, he's not fast and doesn't catch it well out of the backfield, but if you get him going north and south, he's effective. A-train hits you, and A-train hits you hard. And there's another false start, maybe our fourth total of the game. That is the third called against the Firebirds. So that'll back them up. Second now and 13. And as we approach eight and a half minutes left now, I think I can say that the Firebirds have taken back the time of possession battle. As they've controlled the ball almost the entire quarter. They have, I mean, Alter, or Trotwood, sorry. Trotwood punted to them with 16 seconds left in the in the first. So, yeah, Fairmont has held on to the ball this whole quarter. Almost Hillen pitches minutes. back into the backfield. Big hole to the outside. Now back to the left inside the 20 and into the red zone. That is number eight, Soso Poe, with the big first down run for the Firebirds. And that run was more than Soso. That watch, was a great run. Right there. Look, Baker with a huge block right there on the left side to get that big first down run down to the 18 yard line. And you know, the fair, uh, the Firebirds and all this motion that they use, it really, it's, it makes it tough on the defense. It confuses them. Are we going left? Are we going right? Which way? And then. Especially if you pin your ears back and focus on Baker, and then he moves to the outfit or to the outside of the formation, you don't know what's gonna happen. Hillen hands off to Baker and he'll get down inside the 15, down to about the 14. And that's the thing. I mean, Fairmont has, we've already seen four different running backs in the backfield, along with Hillen, carry the ball in this game. So, I mean, it's hard to game plan for which one. I mean, granted, you know Baker's going to get the majority of the carries, but when I was looking at my notes, Soso Poe didn't have a carry at all last week, and he has a, a carry for about 20 yards. Yeah, the, the different variety that this Firebirds team will show you definitely keep you off guard. The last stop was by Antoine Blackshear. I mean, is this going to be another week where our player of the game is the offensive line? You know, Je uh, Jared, I would love that. You gotta, gotta love. I mean, this, this seeing the big line men play well has yet to give up a sack on the season. Fairmont has not had a turnover yet. They last week against Alter, they controlled the time of possession. They controlled the tempo of the game, and Trotwood is going to call a timeout. 6.44 left here on the clock in the first half. I believe that's their second already. Third and five at the 13 coming up for the Firebirds. 
I mean, third and five here, I mean, this is, I mean, you've got the field goal in your back pocket. I mean, Holt has the ability to get it up there from this distance. So, I mean, gamble a little bit. Maybe pitch it to the outside. Let's see if Poe gets, don't, don't look at me. I'm not going to say throw a pass. <laughs> Come on, Jared. You no, know I'm you not, know we love it. Got to gotta see him pass the ball a little bit more. We're, we're wearing the wrong headsets for that. <laughs> but like we mentioned at the top of the broadcast, I mean, Hill and three for three last week. Have to watch it. He only had like 18 pass attempts all last season, yeah. three in the first week. Three Coach, in the first Mil game, Coach yeah. Miller might might be changing the plays a little bit. And one of them was to the lineman that was the game-winning touchdown, Dalton Gusweiler. Just blew us away with oh, that yeah. last week. I mean, sitting in the stands or watching it on TV last week, I mean, it was – you, you call them trick plays for the Firebirds because they don't do them, but mm -hmm. they didn't seem like it was a trick play setup. Yeah, we were texting during the game last week, Jared, and we were both baffled. Hillen keeps the carry. He's going to get down to inside the 10. Stays up inside the 5, down to about the 4. And Hillen work, working his way inside, breaking tackles, not wanting to go down. Got to love it from your quarterback. Followed number 73, See Enoch the Kettering Health Runge. replay. And he's just shedding defenders left and right. No one going to stop him comes down inside the five. You saw on the replay followed Enoch Cruz almost all the way down for a touchdown. Hillen going to line up under center. First and goal at the two. Strong eye formation behind Hillen. 6.08 left. Hillen hands off to Baker. Baker powers through for the Firebird touchdown. Big touchdown for Baker. That's his first of the season. I'm surprised we didn't get one last week, but he yeah. was due, Jared. Baker, you see here in the MVCC Kettering Health replay, Baker powers through. But again, that's the, the offensive line created huge holes. Yeah. I mean, you could have drove a car through that, that left side between number... I think that was 84, Noah Wilkins, and number 78, Brandon Denlinger. I mean, those two are making – I've never seen a high school make that big of a hole for the running back to power through. Yeah, Jared, the, the emphasis on the Battle of the Trenches has been a very – Holt's PAT is up and is good, and Fairmont takes the 7-0 lead. 6.05 left here in – the first half of our MVCC Game of the Week. Now, Andy, what does Trotwood have to do to try to, I mean, you're going to have to score in possession, possession with Fairmont because if Fairmont gets up two scores, and they start to drain this clock, it's hard to catch. Well, you know, Jared, I would really think that if I'm the Rams, I'd try and get get the ball running, or I'd try and get, get the ball moving on the ground a little bit. Owens only has one carry, and I think Carpenter only has one design carry. Other than that, he's had to, he's had to create after being rushed. There's not been much room for this offense really anywhere. They had a couple of early swing passes, but nothing – really able to get going since then so I would expect a couple of running plays maybe try and open things up a little bit there you go Fairmont with that infamous fake kickoff hesitation <laughs> Holt boots it down the middle of the field and Holt gets a hold of one and, and puts it into touchback. the end zone. Beautiful kick by Holt. So now it'll be first and 10 at the 20 again for the Rams. Makes sense why he's a five star. Yeah, a lot of work he put in in the offseason. I saw on his Twitter and Instagram, and he was at Kentucky, he was at Miami, he was at, I think, even Pittsburgh, but he was working. He I hired uh, its game winning kick on Twitter, I believe. And he has put in a lot of work, and it's definitely gone recognized here in the first week and a half, or game and a half here for the Firebirds. 
11 points so far scored on the season for the junior. Hand off to Cleveland around the edge. And he maybe gets the line of scrimmage and pulled back. Not much room there on the play as the Firebirds swarmed on defense. Tackled by number 20, 34, Tyler Adkins, I believe. And they're actually gonna say he gained one. Five and a half minutes left here to go in our first half of MVCC game of the week for week number two. And we, we, we've done it all this week. I mean, changing games last second yesterday. It's supposed to be at West Carrollton versus Pickwell, but COVID canceled Pressure. that. Here's the outlet pass to, I cannot see. We'll see when the defenders move. I believe that was Malachi Johnson, number 24. It was tackled by Evan Thompson for the Firebirds. And then we get everything set up. We're... The breeze was nice, and then we get the lightning delay five seconds into the game. But an hour after, and we're here, 9 o'clock at night, and but we're getting our game in of the week. Yeah, Jared, we always look forward to Friday nights. Third and seven at the 23 for the Rams. Four and a half minutes left here in the first half. Pass along other scores throughout the game as we get them. Pressure the right up the middle. Rocked. It was a big hit. That was number 43. I believe that was 23. Malachi Bowling, we'll see here. He comes out right there in the middle of your screen and he knocks it away right at the end. I think that was intended to number three, Delmar Blanton. And I'll tell you what, Jared Carpenter got walloped on that play as the center, Dexter Owensby Jr., was not able to stop Dalton Gus Will, uh, Weiler. Gus Weiler, yeah, hey. Hit him right in the face. Kid who won the game last week for the Firebirds and in here getting a big hit after the throw. And now we're going to punt. A low kick, or the, the punt was low, dropped, and Fairmont special teams gets it. It's going to be stripped. Picked up by number 29. That is Evan Thompson. Big play for the Firebirds. And that was a disaster for the Rams, Jared. As you look at the Kettering Health replay, it was a bad kick. Low snap on the ground. And look at Gus Weiler powers his way through the block of Blanton. Almost tackled there, but here, watch the end. Evan Thompson comes up, it's stripped out and picks it up right there at the 15 yard line. At the 16, Evan Thompson, a six foot, 191 pound senior linebacker, and he is having the game of his life so far tonight. Four tackles, a forced fumble, and a fumble recovery. Hillen goes back under center, 413 left here in the first half at the 16. Ball on the 16, handoff to Baker, Baker up the middle, and that's gonna be a pickup of about three on the play. Gain. Yeah, right about around three on the play. They'll say four on the scoreboard, so that just an extra yard on the stat sheet. And the Firebirds will take four yards every chunk. That's for sure, Jared. You know, he had 33 carries last game. He had nine in the first quarter. He might get up to 40 in this one. They've been feeding the big man. Hillen under center. Hillen pitches it out. That's a dangerous pitch there. I did not see who got it. A.J. Mullen. That was a late pitch, and I I don't know if I'm going to call that one. They gained a yard on the play, but that was just a little bit too late of a pitch for Hillen. Yeah, that was a risky pitch there by Hillen. That one easily could have been knocked down and maybe scooped up by a defender. Third and five here at the 11. Last time the Firebirds were in this position, they went with a hill and keeper to the left and got down inside the five. You see the extra blocker come here. 
Hillen's going to go back to throw. Throws it middle of the end zone. In to a wide open in. wide receiver. And that one is A.J. Mullen again. Touchdown Firebirds. And Jared, what am I telling you? Coach Miller's starting to throw the ball a little more. And I love to see it. Hillen. Beautiful play, play design right there. Left wide open. And Trotwood just did not react to the defense. And that was one of the keys to the game, Jared. They were going to have to watch the pass. We've been talking about it. We talk about it all the time with this Fairmont team. They're going to lull you to sleep all night long with the run. And then just when you're not expecting it, they're going to hit you over the top with the pass. And it's, they're going to make you pay for it. And there's going to be a offsides on the kick. They're probably going to decline it because the kick was good. So that should make it 14 nothing Firebirds, 244 remaining here in the first half. Penalty is declined. Oh, they're, it's, they're gonna say it was before the ball was snapped, so a dead ball, they have to re-kick it. And now you see a little bit of confusion for the Firebirds. I think they're going to think about going for two here. And they are. Fairmont's offense is coming back out onto the field. And the fire and the Firebird fan base approves as you can hear the roar of the crowd. Coach Miller said, if you're going to give me another chance to think about it. We'll do it. And here you go. The offense coming about back out onto the field going for two here. And now this is where, I mean, this is obvious. You see everybody is right there. With your triple I. Baker powers through and hurdles over into the end zone and gives the Firebirds an extra two points. And, and you know, the Rams have had a lot of mistakes here early in the season. Like you said on the replay, just jumps over the small pile there over the left side of the line. It's going to complete the two-point conversion. Fairmont takes a 15 to nothing lead. 244 left here in the first half. And you know, Jared, I don't think that the Firebirds could have drawn up the first six quarters of their season any better than this. Get a huge win week one against rival Alter and then come out, be up 15 nothing with only Two and a half, two minutes and 44 seconds left going into the, getting ready to go into halftime. Firebirds have started this season off absolutely perfectly. Here's a interesting score here. Centerville is trailing seven to five. <laughs> I'm not sure if I've ever seen five points scored in a football game, Jared. And that is another booming kick by Will Holt. That one's going to be another touchback. I, I'm, I'm following the Elks Athletic Director on Twitter, and it, I'm seeing 7-5. to five. As we get the Kettering Health replay, you can see Holt just launching that thing. Oh, here you go. Centerville scored yards on deep a 48-yard field goal. We're talking about how impressive it would have been if Will Holt could have hit that 42-yarder. And a 48? Ooh. That's, that's, that's bonus points in fantasy football. <laughs> Carpenter back to pass and hauled in there. Nice comeback catch there. I believe that was number three. Delmar Blanton. And he comes up slow. He might have landed on the ball. That can't feel the best, even with that protective chest plate. Kind of got to hope that that's what it is. Just got the wind knocked out of him. Hope he's okay. Second and ten, or second and four, 220 left at the 26. And he stays in the game, so it looks like he is okay. So three wide receivers to the top of your screen, one to the bottom. Carpenter back to pass, rolls to the left a little bit. That one almost looked deflected at the line. There's a flag on the play. And, and that I... was Cleveland on the reception, and he was just swallowed up by the defenders. 
as there were three Firebirds there on the stop. Flag, I think that's going to be a holding again. Holding against Trotwood. And see if Fairmont's going to decline it, make it third down, or take it and make it second. And I think they're seeing 14. where the spot is. No, no, no. it might have been a spot. They're going to they're going to accept the penalty. So it'll be second and fourteen, minute fifty three left in the first half. Actually, I, it's going to be further than that, I think. Because when Garbinder Spot threw foul. it, yeah, he was back a little bit more. So he's second and 17. 153 left. Fairmont with three timeouts. If they can get a quick stop here, they might take this. And, I mean, they get the ball to start the You guys the don't have half. a hurry-up offense, Jared. You never know. <laughs> You never know. It could be a, a turnover. Carpenter's going to run right up the middle, and Carpenter is going to get a big chunk of the penalty back, maybe get back to the original line of scrimmage. It's going to be third and 11, back to the 13, or back to the 19. A minute and a half left. Will Perry is with the tackle for the Firebirds. And watching the replay... It's re really good to see all these different fibers flocking to the ball in defense. So they're going to come back out in the shotgun formation. A minute left here in the first. Carpenter throws it deep, and it is almost intercepted, but that would have been close. I that was number 32, Dawson Cahill. I, that was too close to the sideline. I don't know if he would have come down with that anyway. I think he got a little too excited. 56 seconds left. You saw Trollwood had that missed punt or uh, muffled snap the last time. And this this is this is a big play right here for Trotwood. They gotta get this away cleanly if they want to try. Granted, it's going into halftime, but if you give Fairmont a chance to go up three scores. It's going to be hard to come back because they get to start the ball with the second half. Yeah, if you give Fairmont a three-score advantage, you are not coming back because they're just going to and that, run and it out. Fairmont almost got home on that one. And that one's fielded at the 40, down at the 40. 45 seconds left, three timeouts for the Firebirds. Let's see. I mean, Fairmont, two or three plays from Will Holt field goal territory. And like you said, with three timeouts, anything is possible. Only got to go 40 yards for a touchdown. Only need to go 10 yards, be in good field goal range for Will I would say Will probably Holt. 10, to, 10 to 15. Just, I mean, the season long, or his long last week, I think was 37. So right here at the 40. And here's a set Fairmont runs as a receiver to the top and the bottom. Hilton, column plays out, play clock's down to 10. Hillen hands off to Baker. Baker goes right up the middle. And Fairmont, not gonna take a timeout. I think Fairmont's content with going into the halftime with this lead. They do not have to hike it if they do not want to. Stop by number 17, Amon Dennis. Play clock's at 25. They're virtually even. Fairmont might have to snap it just a half second between the difference. I think they're going to go for a field goal, Jared. Hillen drives right up the middle, and yeah. Fairmont calls a timeout. Seven seconds left, and this is going to be interesting. There, you see Will Holt warming his leg up on the sideline. I mean, from there... This is close almost to a, it would be close to a 50 yard field goal. I would love to see an attempt at Jared. It, that, that's gonna be interesting. It's gonna be interesting. Do you, do you, you just line up and send everybody 
is what I'm thinking. Two timeouts. Or are we maybe going to see a fake and see another pass by the Firebirds? Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I <laughs> Coach Miller surprised me last week throwing <laughs> three times in one game, so I'm not going to say anything's out of the question here for the Firebirds. There was one time in, in the year that Fairmont beat Centerville, there was about 15 seconds left, and Fairmont ran a play, and they threw it downfield, and um, when the receiver caught it, he pitched it right back to the trailing other receiver and got about an extra seven yards. Well, Jared, the offense is back out on the field for the Firebirds. Seven seconds left. Hillen going to drop back, pitch out to Power. It's going to be a throw. deep, and it is hauled in, tackled at the 10, and a timeout called with .3 seconds left. And Will Power with a big pass play on the outside. I think Fair... Miller is like, if you can throw the ball, you're, anybody's going to throw it. Power, look at the offensive line protect that right side. And I did not see who snuck through the backfield. I believe that was that was number 12, Connor Miller. And, Jared, this is a different Fairmont Firebirds than what we're used to wa watching. This has been impressive. As now we're going to get a field goal attempt with point three, the awareness to be able to get the timeout in with point three on the clock. Perfect execution here in the first half by the Firebirds. I mean, that's that's surprising. I think in in the six years that Fairmont's been as Miller's been here, I've seen a running back pass once in six years, and now. But, I mean, you're right. I mean, Miller has got to be right there standing on the sideline because he's the only one that can call the timeout in high school. He's got to be right there at the side ref. Point three seconds left. He's probably pulling on the ref's jersey. Hey, right. let me get I mean, that. I, well, he didn't touch him or there'd be a penalty <laughs> on the field. Of course. But, I mean, just, I mean, right there. I mean, that's bang, down, timeout. Because, I mean, he had to be marked down first. Will hold on to attempt a 20 Seven yard field goal here. Snaps good, holds down, kick is up, and kick is good. Fairmont tacks on three from Will Holt and takes an 18 to nothing lead into the halftime or into the locker room for halftime. You see here the kick go up as we take or go take a halftime break we'll be back with second half stats after the halftime all right just about a minute left on the clock till we get ready for the second half fairmont leading 18 to nothing over the troutwood madison rams and andy has some stats for us in that first half andy what well, you know, Jared, something that we really talked a lot about was the time of possession. And I'm really surprised that Fairmont only is holding a lead in the time of possession by about a minute and 16 seconds. They've had the ball for 12 minutes and 38 seconds total, whereas the Rams, they've had the ball for 11.22. So that's a little surprising. It's well, I was thinking about that. You remember Fairmont blocked that punt. Then that, that, that cut down about probably seven minutes of a drive, I would assume. <laughs> That's definitely a good I mean, point starting there, at the 16 instead of the at least midfield, that, that definitely eats out the Fairmont ground and pound effect. <laughs> That's for sure, Jared. So in the first half, Drew Baker had 18 carries for 59 yards, only averaged about 3.3 yards a rush, but he got a touchdown. You know, he's he definitely is the guy that makes it so their offense moves. But surprisingly enough, the – Firebirds have thrown the ball twice, once from Will Porter and the other one from Malik Hillen. 36 total yards and a touchdown. Malik Hillen had the touchdown throw. Um, Connor Miller has a 25-yard reception, and A.J. Mullen has an 11-yard touchdown catch. And, you know, it's been very surprising to watch so far, Jared, because... The Firebirds have 26 offensive plays. They have 165 yards. And 
The Rams have 15 offensive plays for only 28, so the Rams have just not been able to get anything going here on offense. And a squib right up the middle. Fairmont recovers the onside kick. Will Holt boots it off of a Troutwood defender and recovers it and Fairmont is going for the jugular early here what in the second start, half. Jared, and you see Holt kicks it off one of the front line Rams and is gonna be able to recover his own onside kick attempt. You don't see that happen often, folks. Ever, I've seen it one time, and this it was about eight years ago. Pat it was McAfee. The, no. no, I wasn't, I was talking oh. about high school. It was the state championship, Wayne versus Lakewood St. Edward, Wayne had so much momentum going into the halftime. Lakewood comes out and beams it right off one of their line or one of their lead blockers, gets it back and steals the momentum. And steal all the momentum. And right now, Fairmont, I mean, that, that foot is matted to the gas pedal right now. And you know, coming into this half, they only led the time of possession by about a minute 16, like I just said. But they're about to grow that gap right here, Jared. Hillen takes a snap, handoff up the middle, and that's going to be Baker. He's going to be for about a pickup of two or three. Because now he's going to have eight, 19 carries for 61 yards. Look on the replay. Porter goes in motion, and it takes two defenders to bring down the big running back. We're gonna have second and seven, 11 26 left in the third quarter. Hillen's gonna look over, get some play calls in here. Baker in the backfield. Hillen pitches it late to Porter. Porter upended at the 40 and might get down to the 39. That stop was by number one of the Rams, Dylan Heflin. Now third and four, just under or just over a minute ticked away here in the third quarter. Helen takes the snap, fakes the handoff, and he's going to keep Hillen this keeps one. It has a first down run. Across the 45, out to the 48. Gain of about eight on the play. Another enough for a Firebirds first down. Another stop by Heflin there on the play. So we've called his name quite a few times on the defensive end for the Rams. It looks to be some confusion on the Rams side of the ball. Let's count it. There's six men on the line of scrimmage for Trotwood trying to slow down this rushing attack of the Firebirds. Hillen goes back under center. Play clock's down to four. Hillen hands it off up the middle to Baker. Gets it across the 50 out to the 48. And they're in Rams territory for the first time this half. Nine and a half minutes left here in the third quarter. Fairmont methodically working their way down the field. It is second and six. Hillen goes back under center, play clock to three. Hillen hands it off. First down run for the Firebirds. And you saw number 85 there for Fairmont. Noah Wilkins with a big push. Baker now has over 70 yards on the ground this game. As he's just breaking more tackles. Brought down by Mikel Morton. First and 10 down to the 41 for the Firebirds as the game clock ticks closer and closer. 8.35 left here in the third. You know, we talked before the game, Jared, and something that you said was 
It, Fairmont, if they let their opponent get the possession. And Hillen faked it, hands it, pitches out to Porter. Porter's going to lose out it. Out of bounds. I don't think that one's going to be swept up by Morton right before he goes out of bounds. Great awareness by Morton, able to pull that thing in just before he meets the white boundary. This is close. Watch Hillen. Great pitch by Hillen. Great fake. I mean, Trump would recover nice defensively. And there you see number <laughs> number seven, two. two. Michael Smith got his helmet on the ball, was able to knock it out, and Morton gets the recovery. This is exactly what the Rams needed to do here to start the second half. The Rams have a player down on the field with 8.24 left here in the third quarter. Trotwood has got to capitalize on this possession if they want to try and get back into this game. I mean, especially, I mean, I'll say it. I thought Trotwood was dead in the water after Fairmont recovered that onside kick. Yeah, and, you know, Jared, that, like you said, that might be the thing that they need as the big lineman is going to get up and that was slowly walk his way off field. Michael Preston, or 78, sorry, that was Ernest Hill. But I was actually saying it right before the, the fumble. We were talking about before the game how you said if Fairmont gives their opponent enough possessions, oftentimes that's enough for them to lose a game, and this is how you give your opponent enough possessions. It's careless turnovers like that. I, I don't know if I'd call that a careless turnover. Smith put his helmet right into Porter's arms, and, I mean, that was a big hit to knock the ball out. I mean, and now Trotwood, Carpenter under center. The, Trotwood's offensive line has got to step it up right now. We have not seen them under center very Carpenter often. Carpenter back to pass, launches it down the field, and it is hauled in by number seven. Robert Garrett. At midfield, and that's a gain of about 17 on the play. You watch the replay. Carpenter, he has a little bit of time here. Still not great uh, great blocking by the men up front, but he Ooh, had more time. Could have gone away with a hold there up top by number four for Trotwood. Saw the slight jersey tug, and normally the refs are on that call quickly. Carpenter back under center, back to pass. Here comes a Firebird rush, lobs it out, and tackled at midfield by number 45 and number 29 for the Firebirds. That is Evan Thompson and Will Perrys. And we've called Thompson's name a lot so far here tonight, Jared. He's in there on another defensive play. It's a spot foul. I think holding cold against Trotwood. That'll be the fourth penalty of the game on Trotwood. I think that's the fourth holding penalty. Two. That's going to back him up to the 35. First and a quarter of the field. First and 25. And this has been a, a theme for the Rams early in this season. Penalties are... Penalties and lack of blocking up on the front offensive line. A, ha a handoff here right up the middle. Shot number 20. That was 28. Arian Edwards. Arian Edwards. Trollwood's changing jerseys on us and we didn't okay. get the updated list. <laughs> but it'll be second and 23, only a gain of two by Edwards on the play. Cleveland and Garrett to the bottom of the formation. Pressure by the Firebirds. Carpenter back to pass, throws it to the sideline, it's tipped. And that one could have been a lot worse. Zach Hutchinson there, number six for the Firebirds, goes up and kind of puts a shoulder into the hip of Cleveland and that broke up the pass. And it looked like there was a little bit of confusion there on the play as the Rams Cleveland had and, two receivers in the, right there in the same area. Yeah, Cleveland and Garrett both were in the same spot, and I don't think Graham called that on the sideline. So now it'll be third and 23 
for the Rams here. And you, I mean, you were just given a possession by the Firebirds on that forced fumble. And now as we approach at 6.50 left on the clock right now in the third quarter, Trotwood has got to pick this up if they want to try and mount any momentum. Carpenter back to pass. Middle of the field pass to Cleveland. Caught before the 50, but well short of the first down. It's going to be fourth and about 12. And, you know, Carpenter didn't have a lot of time. You can see the edge rusher right there, number 29, Thompson, Thompson. again. I mean, we're, we're just going to assume it's going to be Thompson on every play defensively. He's but. been everywhere tonight, Jared, coming off the edge, playing back in coverage. He's been Forced great Forced fumble, tonight. fumble recovery. Two passes broken up. Right here, fourth and 12 at the 48. I mean, this could be potential fake for the Rams, but I don't think so. Is there, they get the punt off. Baker is going to let it bounce, and it's going to roll inside the fit. Well, it's going to roll right and stop at the 15. Got a Rams bounce there. 5.58 left here in the third quarter. Fairmont leading 18 to nothing. And, you know, Jared, the Rams, they're really going to have to get some stops. Yeah, they're going to have to get, and they're going to have to disrupt this offensive line's rhythm. I mean, Fairmont is creating a four- and five-hole-yard chunk for Baker or Porter or Hillen to run through. And like you said, it's it's all the offensive line. These big guys have, have been working really hard here early in the season. Uh, Baker had 140 rushing yards last week due to these big men up front, and they're getting it done again tonight. And we'll find out at the end of this quarter, but I'm sure he's probably close to 100 yards already. Got to be above 75. Pitch out here to Soso Poe. Poe cuts it, tries to cut it back in, gets tackled at about the 17, so a gain of three on the play as Soso Poe has his second carry of the season. You know, it's not much, Jared, but that's one of those plays that with a running team, you know, you, you take it because you want to stretch out the defense to get them thinking we're going left, we're going right, and then you can hit them right up the middle and doing what Baker's been doing so good tonight. And staying in bounds is also key for this Firebirds team. I mean, that's how you drain the clock. As you see now, Hillen hands off to Baker. Baker right up the middle, maybe gets back to the line of scrimmage. Nowhere to go there. Blackshear in on the stop. Big number 99 for the Rams. Maybe a gain of one on the play out to the 20. So it'll be third and five here for the Firebirds as we approach just under five minutes left. Hillen going to go under center. You see Baker to back there in the backfield, and Porter, or Poe goes in motion. Poe gets the pitch, pitch to the outside. Poe will have enough run for the Firebirds first down, and he's close to midfield, pushed out of bounds at about the 47. Michael Smith is going to push him out, but you know, Jared, we are just talking about getting him going left, getting him going right. Never know where the Firebirds are going to go. Beautiful pitch there by Hillen. He's so good at just waiting in to draw the defense in as long as possible, gets the pitch out, and then you have a, a huge lane up the left side. I mean, how fun is it to say so, so, po? <laughs> I mean, it just, it just flows off the tongue for a big run. And he now has three big carries. That's probably put him over the 50-yard mark in carries. It's he had a 16-yarder in the first quarter. And that one was probably about a gain of at least 720. Baker. He's going to juke. Breaks one tackle, breaks another one. Baker. And Baker it's down the left side. Race. Baker's going to have a 47 yard touchdown run. And what a play, Jared. We talk about this kid all the time his ability to break tackles, get a nice little hop step at the beginning of that play, and never stops turning his legs. And you can see the entire stadium is going nuts right now. You see there, look on the replay. Side step right there, breaks a defender's tackle, bulls over that man. That is He's off to the races there at the end. No one's going to stop him. That is a big time run there by Drew Baker. The legs kept on churning. And, I mean, that right there is 
virtually a play-by-play -play run of a Mike Allstott touchdown run. I mean, he powered over, bulldozed two different people, and just kept the legs churning for a 40, oh, no, that's going to be a 54-yard touchdown run. And, Jared, we were just talking about a minute ago how we were thinking he was probably over 70 yards. Well, well let's, let's over, make it yeah. over 110 now. That was a beautiful run by the big man. As you can see on the Kettering Health replay, the Holt, the kick from Holt up and good. It's going to make it 25 to nothing. And never in a million years have I would have expected for this type of a score right now, Jared. Half of the third quarter remaining just about. And the Firebirds are looking for another big defensive stop. And then, maybe the first time I've ever seen, they're going to try and get a running clock here. They're looking to blow this thing wide open. Just got word Baker has 128 on that run. On 23 carries, so almost 10 yards on average on the carry. And you know, he's, he's looking like he's gonna have a record, a career season here, Jared. Had nearly 800 yards last year. And he didn't start two games. Well, no, he, he didn't start running back until I think week four or week three in a six week season. Yeah. His, he had a breakout game against Wayne last year. And Will Holt, yards. Oh, Fairmont, a loose ball. Let's see the who has it. The ball is still loose, and it looks like the Firebirds are going to get this one. Fairmont recovers another squib kick, and that is number, number 32 on the recovery. Max Collin. Max Collin Con with a recover there. Fairmont is throwing everything at this Trotwood team, and just a misfortune handled there. Swift and Swift kick. Up the, up the left side. And you see here, Colin comes in right at the end. And you know, Jared, I was really surprised. There was two or three Rams there. I thought that they had it. But the Firebirds, they never stopped hustling. They didn't quit until the whistle, and they were able to come away with the ball. Huge play. As this has been a disastrous third quarter for the Rams. Baker with 123 yards, looking to add more here on this carry. And he adds about four more on the play. And only four minutes left here in the third quarter. And I mean, you want to talk about a loss for words. I mean, I've never seen everything go one team's way. I mean, two onside or um, an onside kick recovery and a squid recovery in the same quarter. Yeah, Jared, it's it's been a complete domination in all facets of the game by We've, the Firebirds here tonight. Baker picks up his two first two touchdowns of the year. Hillen throws for an or no, that was. Yeah, Hillen threw for another touchdown. He's two for two on passing touchdowns this year. And four for four, four overall. For four. four for four on the season. And Fairmont building a lot of momentum going in. I, They play next week. I have the schedule somewhere. I think, I want to say next week is Next week is here versus Chaminade Julian. And Hillen Hillen fakes the pitch and a beautiful Ooh. fake. He, and he, the way he dove down, I thought there, number two, Dylan Heflin. You see on the replay, waits for the very last second, fakes it, jump cut inside, and is able to pick up eight or nine yards. He's been so good tonight, Jared. Fairmont picks up the first down, and that'll take the clock down to at least two and a half minutes left here in the third quarter and Fairmont looking to add to an already 25 to nothing lead over the Troutwood Madison Rams. Fairmont, 
Soso Poe gets the pitch, gets across the 30. And that was a good, good cut by Poe. He would have gotten taken down for a loss of yardage just there, but jump cut, able to get back to the line of scrimmage. A gain of one is a gain of is a positive play in any offensive or a run dominant offensive play. And Jared, you can see most of the defensive line for the Rams on their knees. Oh, they're 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 dead. These guys tired. are tired. I mean, they have been on the on the field probably virtually. I mean, Charlotte had one has had one possession, and it was a short possession, so virtually the entire quarter. Yeah, as Baker gets a carry, Baker hurdles the defender, almost breaks out of that arm tackle there, but gets down to about the 22-yard line. Michael Smith in on the stop. He held on for dear life right there. If not for him, I think Baker's yeah, going to break Baker, that one. If he could have cut out a little bit more to the left there, he that would have been another one to that another house call for Baker. Good job by Smith to hang on. Third and two with a minute left here in the third quarter of our MVCC Game of the Week presented by Kettering Health. And here we go. Fairmont going to go to that strong eye. Hillen hands off to Baker. Baker powers through, has the first down. And look at the extra extra defensive or offensive push there by number 19, Owen Russell, making a huge hole to the outside. That's a first down run for the Firebirds, and Fairmont will have to hike it at least one more time in this quarter as the play clock is, or the game clock's at 35, play clock's at 20. So this will probably be probably be the last play of the third quarter. An impressive one where Fairmont has come out and taken the game. Absolutely taking it over, Jared. They've only scored one touchdown. This has been such a lopsided quarter. Baker powers through, gets about a gain of four, down to about the 11, and that one is gonna do it for the third quarter. Fairmont gonna go into the fourth quarter with a 25 to nothing lead, and with almost all momentum on the Firebirds side after a huge third quarter by the Fairmont special teams, two kickoff recoveries. And you hear the home crowd on this side definitely getting loud here for this fourth and final quarter of our MVCC Game of the Week, week number two presented by Kettering Health. Now, I mean, we can we can talk about, I mean, next week our game is going to be, um, it's going to be the Upper Arlington Golden Bears versus the Springboro Panthers. It's going to be Springboro's home opener next week. And Andy, you just got handed the stat sheet. Go ahead and fill us in. And Jared, I'm pleased to tell you that our favorite player, Drew Baker, has 28 rushes for an absurd 149 yards, two touchdowns, over 5.3 yards of carry. He's been exceptional tonight. And I'd have to say the same for quarterback Malik Hillen. He's, he has five rushes for 52 yards as well. This has just been a complete showing by the Firebirds. They have outside of Baker over 120 yards with the three other rushers, Hillen, Soso Poe, and Will Porter. So just complete domination here by the Firebirds. Only 60 yards on the other side of the field for the Rams with the Firebirds acquiring 315. Our fourth quarter is about to start. Going to be a pitch outside to Poe. He's got a lane to the end zone, and that's a touchdown. So, so Poe, that's going to get him over 60 yards on the game, and that is his first touchdown of the season. As you can see on the NBCC, Kettering Health replay, Hillen with another perfect weight, and he pitches it out. There's a beautiful lane there for Poe. Good job by number two on the blocking. Ryan Lees keeping the cornerback sealed on the outside and giving Poe enough room to scamper into the end zone, making the lead.
31 to nothing. Firebirds. There was a holding call, it looks like. And I did not see the laundry, I did. I did not either. Give it back to Poe. Let he, him do it again. He deserves it. Yes. This one. Hillen still has the ball, and it looks like no one knew who had the ball there. Hillen was looking to someone to pitch it to, but no one on the play, and that is a rare loss of yards for the Firebirds. You see Hillen, I don't know, miscommunication, but you see Dave Miller run out onto the field with 20 seconds left on the play clock. Hillen with the snap. He's going to drop back to pass. Hillen throws Finds it to Baker. Baker, Baker tiptoes around the sideline and gets down inside the five. And Hillen, five for five on the season. Jared, this is not your same old Firebirds. What is going on? We have six passes in the first three, two games of the season. And it's another great play design. As Baker is wide open, no one within 10 yards is able to hurdle the defender there and get inside the, the five yard line. 10.45 remaining here in the game. Fairmont gonna bring that back out that strong eye and the timeout's gonna be called by Hillen. Fairmont calls a timeout with 10.36 left here in the game. Fairmont has not made many mistakes here, Jared. That one penalty a little earlier, pulling back the touchdown, but besides that, not really much. It has been excellent execution here. Jared, looking at our stat sheet, somehow the Rams are keeping the time of possession close. As Fairmont. Fairmont's scoring quickly. That's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you had a what the 58-yard run by Baker, uh, a 30-yard run there by Poe that got called back. But I mean, I mean, Fairmont is. I mean. It, it's weird to see a Fairmont dominant game where they're not dominating the play or time of possession like we've said. Now you're going to see Hillen come back out under center. It's first end goal at the five. Hillen. Going to take it. Hillen going to run to the edge, and Hillen's going to be in from five yards out for his first rushing touchdown on the season. Tyreek Gooch, number five, almost able to bring him down there in the backfield, but was unsuccessful. You see here, look look at that big hole. Baker tucks out, takes out two defenders right there on the edge, and Hillen adds his first rushing touchdown of the game. Jared, I would have never expected for this game to be 31, make it 32 to nothing. The Firebirds just completely outclassed the Rams tonight. You saw there in the replay, Holt's extra point is up and good. And for any people that were scoreboard watching on Max Preps, there was a confusion. Alter did not beat Thurgood 99 to nothing. They beat them 49 to nothing. It's not quite as bad. And now Fairmont, I mean, 
at this point, I mean, I'm not going to say anything until the play is over because Fairmont could very well get the ball back. And, I mean, for all you Firebirds fans watching, the Fairmont Firebirds have not started 2-0 and since 2017. That year, they went on to make the playoffs. A little bit of foreshadowing there, Jared. Yeah. I mean, when you're known around the community, you got to try to pump them up as much as you can. Voice of the Firebirds here. Uh, I've been told that. I don't I, – I've not proclaimed myself that. And Holt sends this one deep and into the back of the end zone. That's at least his third touchback third of the Third touchback night. of the game. But he's also had an onside kick recover for himself. And it's just, I mean, he, you see why he's a five-star kicker as yeah. a junior. That's for sure, Jared. You know, I really kind of want to give player of the game to the, to the lines of the Firebirds again tonight. But I don't know. Holt is, is making himself a case. Hold, I, I thought we were going to go give it to Evan Thompson. I mean, th that man is e everywhere on the defensive end. Or what about Drew Baker? 150 yards, two I don't touchdowns. Know. I mean, I can put a poll out on Twitter and we can let the fans decide tomorrow. Maybe that's what we do, Jared. I think so. I mean, I, it, it's so hard. I mean, so many pieces have went together for the Firebirds team. Carpenter hands this one off up it, the left side. About a gain of two. Not much there. Stop by number 44. Dalton Gusweiler. But this has just been a complete effort by Fairmont. All facets of the game completely wrapped up by them. Tonight. Carpenter back to pass, throws it to the far sideline and almost intercepted just out of the outside stretched arms of number 15. Grayson Holbrook. Grayson Holbrook. That's going to make it third and seven. At about the 23 yard line and with 9 10 left, Troutwood looking to go out three and out for the fifth time, fourth time tonight. And you know, we, we talked about how they were gonna have to have man, more manageable third downs this week. You know, I, I think the shortest that they've had third down was third and six. It just hasn't happened, Jared. Carpenter back to pass and is brought down in the backfield with a big sack. Let's see who was first to come up. That might have been Look at the Kettering Health replay. It was number 19, Owen Russell. I don't know, Jared. I think that one was 45, Will Perry's. I'm just going with what the PA guy said, so I, I, I listen to that. If I can't see the number, I, I just go with what the PA guy says. And I think they said that I don't think that's Carpenter in a quarterback anymore. Well, regardless, Jared, great pressure by the front, defensive front of the Firebirds, getting another sack. This is just a dominant performance by this Firebird team, and the injured player for Troutwood is up now. See all of the teammates taking a knee. And you can hear the Firebird crowd applauding. Happy to see the young fella up on his feet. Gotta love good, good sportsmanship, Jared. So it'll be fourth and 16 at the 14. Mullen back deep to return for the Firebirds.
Mullen had the touchdown catch in the first half. Low snap on the punt, but it gets this one away. And Trotwood is going to down it at about the 40 eight yard line for the Firebirds and Fairmont gonna have excellent starting field position with 7.55 left here in the fourth quarter. First and 10 at the 48 and Fairmont gonna send out the backup quarterback, that is number 14, Dylan Krieger. And this is a smart move by the Firebirds. Give, in, give the backups some time in varsity action. Yeah, Jared, you never want to think about this, but you know, just you want Just wanna, in case, yeah. Ju and look at, here's a big run. Krieger. And Krieger just tripped up or he would have had himself a house call. Yeah, as we were saying, you want for your backups to have a little bit of experience just in case someone goes down. Now, nah, let me, let me, I mean, Krieger was like, yeah, let me think about maybe taking this one to the house and just tripped up right Shoe there. Shoelace tackle at the end of the play, and if not, that one would have been a touchdown. I mean, these backups, I mean, they're just not in to just kill the time. I mean, they're, they're, this is their playing time. And and these guys let, are. Let me have a chance. They're trying to get better out here. They don't have a lot of time to get snaps, but they're looking to take advantage of the ones they get. You're going to see Will Porter in the backfield here for the Firebirds, and Porter gets a big carry, strong power move right up the left side of that offensive line. Porter, a powerful back. And actually, I forgot to announce that um, this is the the OHSA clock rule, the Fairmont's up 30 or more, so now the clock will keep continuing to run, except at change of possession or timeouts, obviously. Krieger's getting the play from the sideline. And we saw him, I mean, when we were down there waiting to interview Coach Miller, I mean, he was down there, he was throwing the ball. They weren't running practice plays with him, and I think Porter carried that one again. Yeah, Jared, he, he's got a little bit of an arm on him. So, you know, if if Hillen does end up going down this season, maybe we see Fairmont throw the ball a little more. I wouldn't expect it, but anything is possible. Five and a half minutes left here in the fourth quarter. Fairmont up 32 to nothing over the Troutwood Madison Rams. And I mean, like like Coach Miller said in the interview, this was Witten Woods. I mean, the Witten Woods is a strong perennial playoff team and Krieger goes end over end and gets a first down run for the Firebirds. They continuously send linemen and players to the next level. And so maybe you, you're playing a smaller Fairmont school. Maybe we thought that it would have been something different, but this Fairmont line, both sides of the ball, is just creating havoc the first two weeks for their first two opponents. Well, you know, Jared, and maybe you gotta think Trotwood kind of knew what you know Coach Miller told us. You know, he, they were playing a, a, a much more talented team, a, a team that routinely sends guys to the next level, and so you know maybe they got up for last game and they were just out talented. Uh, you know, Wentwood was just too talented. And then tonight, you know, you come in and you expect to have a much easier game because Fairmont doesn't have the track record of sending players to the Big Ten and the SEC and, and whatnot. And then you get surprised. You're not ready. Right. And I mean, clearly the, the Firebirds are ready tonight. Right. Then that, that's why, I mean, you ask any coach, they do not overlook an opponent on their schedule. Any given Friday. and Krieger is letting this clock wind all the way down. Play clock's down to five. We're under four minutes left here in the game. Krieger pitches it out to Soso Poe. There's a flag on the play. But I want, I want, I want to see Poe get a touchdown. I mean, we will not see this Firebird squad again until – 
week five is that we'll be back here, Springboro at Fairmont. But, I mean, next week we have a – I've not done my notes yet for next week, but, I mean, Upper Arlington, a, a suburb of Columbus. Columbus is almost, has always had strong playoff teams for the region, and Upper Arlington is a few years removed, I think, from making it to the state semifinals. Yeah, Jared, and, you know, when you get when you get to these bigger cities like Cincinnati and Columbus, it's more people, the, the, there's more competition, bigger, better players. So that'll be an interesting game to prepare for as the week, as we get closer to next week, Jared. Krieger fakes the handoff, keeps it in. No, no, that was, that was Porter. Porter. Krieger faked me out too. But, I mean, Springboro, they're going to play a Springboro Panthers team at, Hall, or at Carefly Field next week. I mean, Springboro is probably have the longest tenured coach in Ryan Wilhite. I mean, there is nothing, I mean, opposing coaches, everybody, I mean, just praises Will Height. I mean, he, he, he does it right. And that's why, I mean, covering Springboro is one of my one of my top favorite teams to cover. I mean, Will Height, I mean, he just, it's open arms with him. I mean, there's no thing, there, there's no, he doesn't say no. It's so, so Poe. Looks like he stepped out of bounds over there on the left side up to around the 26. And Jared, just an update, the Golden Bears had a great week this week. Uh-oh. Won 37 to 14. Over? It says the Knights. Toledo Knights? Maybe. Let me look up and see what Springboro has done. Holds on to attempt a 40. This is a 44-yard field goal, 43-yard field goal. Holtz kick is up. It has the distance, and Holtz splits the uprights for his second field goal over 40 tonight. And that was a boomer, Jared. I was not expecting that one to go, but it you just watch it, and it just keeps going and going and going. That one would have been good from another five or six yards. This hole is just adding to that five-star resume we've been talking about all night. That pushes the lead to 35 to nothing. <laughs> 56 seconds left in the game. And last update I have, 10 minutes ago, Springboro is beating Middletown 20 to seven. So this next week is gonna be a good matchup next week for us as the Upper Arlington Golden Bears. That's gonna be a mouthful to say next week. Looks like the Golden Bears played St. Francis this week. Okay. And that, I think that's another strong Columbus team, more, more basketball known, but another strong team. So. Trotwood is going to play at or play home Springfield next week, and Fairmont's going to stay home and play Chaminade Julien. Will Holt with his fourth touchback. So, Jared, it sounds like Springboro is going to have their work this is gonna be, cut well, out for them next week. Springboro had an extra week to prepare because Lebanon, they didn't play week one because Lebanon had COVID. So, this Panthers team is ready. And it's going to be interesting. It's going to be a good game as the final 18 seconds are going to tick off the clock. And Fairmont's going to win, advance to 2-0 for the first time since 2017. Fairmont wins 35 to nothing over the Troutwood Madison Rams. And we're, we're going to throw you a curveball. If you want to find out who the player of the game was, you're going to have to watch the rebroadcast because we'll interview him after the game. Sounds good, Jared. Sounds like fun, man. For everybody else on the MVCC Game of the Week staff, we're signing off for week number two. We'll be back for week number three as it'll be the Upper Arlington Golden Bears versus the Springboro Panthers. Offensively, you guys controlled this game from the get-go, multiple possessions, but, I mean, what is the best thing about going 2-0 to start the season? 
Uh, just the feeling of being 2-0. I mean, undefeated, there's nothing like it. Um, I mean, like I said, we're undefeated right now, and we're looking forward to CJ. All right, thank you. We'll see no you problem. in a couple weeks. You guys are 2-0 for the first time since 2017. I know you're not one to foreshadow and look, but you made the playoffs the last time you started 2-0. But, I mean, what can you tell us what you got to do next week to CJ? We, we have a challenge ahead of us, believe me. We've, we've already seen them on film. Uh, they have two receivers and a quarterback and, and some really good running backs, a kid that's a D1 kid playing off. So that's a good football team we're getting ready to play. I think they're, they're neck and neck with Cincinnati Moeller right now. So we better get right back to business. <laughs> Or, or uh, you know, that'll stop. So, all right. Congrats on the big win, and we'll see you in a couple weeks for against the Panthers. Okay, thank you. All right, here with defensive player of the game, Evan Thompson. Evan, like your that. stat line tonight was insane. In the first drive, oh. you had four tackles, and then in the still in the first quarter, a forced fumble and a fumble recovery. I Did didn't you think when you took the field tonight that you were going to have that kind of stat line in just the first quarter? Uh, definitely not. My team, uh, they set me up like really well. Uh, Malachi Bowling, he was doing a good job uh, scraping and getting me like clean tackles, easy tackles the entire time. Yeah. <laughs> and the defense, I don't. We just came out like, in a, oh, I don't know how to explain. <laughs> we just came out like on all, firing on all cylinders. It was amazing. All right, you guys are two and zero for the first time since 2017. I asked Baker and Coach. What does 2-0 feel like right now in the locker room? Oh, it is amazing. I, I've never felt like the chemistry on this team better. I, I played like my sophomore year, my junior year, and I'm telling you, the chemistry in the locker room has never been better. All right, thank you. Great game tonight.
Mike number one. Quick slant out. And another incomplete pass intended to the Jake Kenner. Yeah. If you're the Eagles, you have to get up on this defensive play and force the quarterback to make an, an error. Excellent, you get the ball in, nicely done. 3-3, go to 3. Bell. Bell breaks oh. two tackles. Call you three. Bell's nicely out. done. Oh, oh he should have stayed there. Keep falling the back three. 